Hello and welcome to Question the Weird. And happy Halloween to you. Tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. No interviews, no little documentaries. We're going to do your scary stories that were submitted to me. So, sit back and relax and listen to these spooky stories this Halloween. Story number one. My... Okay. My cousin was about three years old living in the old house that my father grew up in. He was heard talking and playing with somebody upstairs in his room. My aunt and uncle let it go on for a while, thinking it was just a phase, an imaginary friend or whatnot. You know, things that three-year-olds normally do. One day they finally asked him who he was talking to. He calmly looked at them and said, C.C. Brown. Such an odd name for a kid to make up, especially at three. Turns out the man who built the old farmhouse, and also died there, was named Clarence Brown. So that was the first submission. Story number two. This all happened in Yonkers, New York when I was two or three. At night I'd be visited by two different people. One was an old man who'd just sit in the corner of my room and watch me. He's not important to the story, just creepy. The other person I would just call the lady. Every night I would complain to my mom about her tickling my feet and keeping me up at night. Uh, but not the same way that a kid would normally joke around with this kind of thing. I was really pissed. I was mad that she wouldn't let me sleep. There was one day I was playing in the sprinkler outside and I suddenly stopped, walked over some steps, and sat down and held a whole conversation with no one. When my mother asked who I was speaking with, I was confused. Why she, why she couldn't even see the lady. My mom just sat down and watched it all happen. The decor of this home was horrible when we bought it. The walls were painted lime green, pink, so naturally my parents wanted to redecorate. Every single time they were painting a room, the pipes in the house would cling and clatter, and things in the basement would fly off the walls. I'm not telling it very dramatically, but apparently, like that, unnatural loud banging where it fell and the house was going to explode was the feeling that we felt. So the next part there was a, a wallpaper of Mount St. Helens adorning the largest part of the house. It was unattractive. My parents decided to paint over this and as they did the painting the usual racket from the basement would happen but the really weird thing happened the next day. When my parents went to go look at it, Mount St. Helen had arisen again and bled through the painted wall. Depending on which version of the story, there was anywhere from 10 to 40 coats of paint put on it, and each day it seemed like nothing had happened in the morning. The final part of the story, the lady that owned the home before us, she supposedly grew an impossible tree. This tree was not able, was not supposedly able to grow in this climate or in the soil there, but the lady said, fuck you, to the haters, and she grew that goddamn tree. One night during the storm, the tree got struck by lightning and split in half. It landed on the roof of our garage, so my dad had to cut it down. The lady apparently did not like that, and while he was cutting it down, that regular clatter from the basement happened. Things flying off the walls, pints banging, and then one out of nowhere, the door in the kitchen to where the basement would lead started swinging open and closed, slamming over and over. Open, slam, open, slam, it kept going until eventually my mom stood up and screamed, you are no longer welcome here. Get the fuck out of this house and other variations of this until the door stopped slamming and the basement quieted down. That was the last that we ever heard of anything paranormal in that home until we had to move years later. Years ago when I first moved to Chicago, those were the days of browsing Craigslist for apartments that were relatively inexpensive and legit. I had found a nice one bedroom apartment on the north side of the city for only 700 a month. So I signed the lease and got the keys and moved into my own apartment. It was great. I had my, all of my own things, I didn't have to answer to anyone, and I was closer to my job at the time. I moved in around the beginning of December, 
and that positive feeling began to slowly fade after several months though. To paint a picture of this apartment building, the main entrance was like any other apartment. Renewed, new tile, a little dirty but nothing really amiss. The back hallway where the laundry was and the back door exit looked like you were walking through an exposed pint boiler room. It was really dark, pretty creepy, and it led to the stairwell, where also there was always a broken service elevator that lived. I lived in the second floor, all the way, all the way at the end of the hallway, right by the fire escape. You had to get off the elevator when it worked, then there was a single light bulb exposed hanging in front of the elevator as well as the doors leading to the stairwell. So as you walk down the hallway towards the apartment, it grew darker and darker to the point that once I got to my apartment, I would have to use a lighter to find the keyholes to unlock my door. The hallway had a dingy red carpeting that I would assume at some point this building was a hotel. The paint on the walls had faded with white cracks and the plaster, and it was always eerily quiet even though there was about 12 apartments per floor. Inside my apartment, it wasn't too bad at first glance. New appliances, hardwood floors, small but perfect for one person. It had a stunning view of an alley, which was terrible. As you walked into my place, you are in the living room. A mirror closet is the first thing that you'll see, and to the left was a tiny kitchen. Straight ahead was my bathroom and my bedroom which had a small closet as well as a door that wouldn't latch closed due to it always being ajar. The first few months were great. Single guy living by himself, having a blast. Then things began to change. One evening I was lying in my bed and I couldn't really fall asleep. So as I was lying, trying to let my mind wander off so I could eventually doze off, the light from the alley lit up the room so bright so you could see everything without even turning on a light. As I lay there, pre-smartphone era, I noticed a closet door that is always ajar, slowly open, all the way. Then it slowly closed all the way. It continued to do this for about three minutes until I got up, turned the light on, stopped it halfway. At this point, my heart was racing, so I closed it to its normal ajar state turn off the light and return to bed. As I just got situated and comfy, the door flew open hard enough to leave an indent from the doorknob in the wall. I did not sleep that night. After that initial experience, there were other issues with the apartment that made it less than glorious. They had bed bunks, rats, mice in the walls, and other pests. So once I realized that, these, that there were bed bugs, I threw away my mattress and slept on the couch. My first night on the couch, I was just about to fall asleep and I heard a very loud bang. I jolted up and I could see the closet door had opened and then slowly was closing. I got up and closed the bathroom door, the bedroom door, and just tried to ignore the room altogether. Around this time, about summer, my formerly happy-go-lucky self was now depressed, tired, and nervous about being at home. So, to help combat my depression, my parents got me a cat. He was a cute little black cat named Mike. Having him there was great. He caught mice, he slept by my side every night, welcoming me home. He was my little buddy. He was about two, and I took him to get a checkup and get his shots. I want to say this was on a Monday. The following Sunday, I noticed he wasn't eating or drinking, so I called my mom to have him take have him take him to the vet. The next morning, I woke up on the I woke up on the couch and he wasn't next to me. The place wasn't big at all, so I checked the living room, bathroom, and then finally I opened up the bedroom door and he bolted out. He was breathing through his mouth, which that was, since this was my first cat I owned, I knew that they shouldn't be panting. So, we took him to the vet, and long story short, he had trauma that caused issues with his lungs. So he had unfortunately had to be put to sleep the same day. 
When I got home, I felt a bigger weight get stacked on me. The beginning of September, every night around 3 a.m., I would hear someone knocking on the bedroom door and on the closet hitting the wall and shuffling around my bedroom. Several times I heard the sound of someone trying to turn the doorknob. One night around 2 a.m. I was watching TV and I was getting ready to go to sleep and I heard my neighbors, which I saw two people move out two weeks prior, arguing. I couldn't make out what they were saying, but I heard someone kick in a door and enough banging for me to want to call the police. As quickly as it started, it ended. I was fearful because it sounded like someone might have gotten hurt badly. I woke up the next day and locked my door and turned around and the realtor was showing that same apartment to a couple. The apartment was completely empty, which made me even more confused. In late September, early October, when I would go into my room to get my clothes there, there were weird stains coming from the ceiling, which were there before, but the room was about 20 degrees colder than the living room. Keep in mind the temperature was still about the upper 60s, and my bedroom was cold enough to see your own breath. I had a female friend over one evening and we fell asleep on the couch. I woke up in the morning and took a shower to get ready to work and leaving her to sleep. When I got out of the bathroom, she was sitting up there on the couch, white as a ghost. When I asked her what was going on, she said someone was whispering into her ear and when she rolled over, she saw somebody in my bedroom peering out then closing the door. She left. By November, I had pretty much made my bedroom off limits. I would keep clean clothes in the living room and never go in there for anything. The few times I would go in there, it would be abnormally cold. My nose would begin to bleed at times, pretty aggressively. At this point, I was done living there. There was something not good, and it was making me feel horrible and thriving off it. So I went to the company I was renting from. My lease was up in March, and I gave them a laundry list of pests, structural problems, and a whole bunch of issues with the place, and I told them that I am breaking the lease December 1st, and I will be reimbursed for all the things I had to throw away because of the bed bugs, and if they threaten legal action, I would go straight to the city. They agreed to terminate my lease and give me a check for $600. Moving was easy. Everything was trash. I bought new inexpensive furniture and moved it directly into my new place. My mom was helping me finish up. She said that she was going downstairs to the car. I said I'd be down in a second. I just needed to finish up sweeping. So I was sweeping to make sure I had everything. I opened up the bedroom door for one last time. It, was com it wasn't cold, surprisingly, even though it was winter. But I still had a creepy feeling going in there. I turned off the bedroom light and turned off the living room light. I looked at my old apartment for one last time. I saw the closet door slowly opening and closing. I locked it and hoofed the fuck out of there down that creepy ass hallway and ran down to my mom's car, leaving that nightmare behind me. Those were three creepy stories shared with me. Uh, happy Halloween. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep getting notified on more videos like this. So. Happy Halloween, stay spooky, and keep questioning the weird. Thank you.